Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us this far. We do appreciate that you have chosen to start your morning with us. But in case you are just joining us, karibu tena sana. This is Good Morning Kenya. I am Jane Mumboy. You can always let us know where you are watching us from this morning. We are using the hashtag Good Morning Kenya on Twitter. Our official station handle ever remains to be at KBC Channel 1 across all the social media platforms. My handle is at Jane Mumboy across the socials as well. So right now we want to move on to the next segment and this is all about physiotherapy and especially so in the Kenyan space. Joining us via Zoom to help with this conversation this morning we have two gentlemen. We have Mr. Douglas Kotut, who is to the left of your screen. He is the CEO of the Physiotherapy Council of Kenya. Good morning Douglas and welcome to the program. Good morning Jim and uh, happy to be with you today new this morning. Thank you. And to the right of your screen, we have Mr. Henry Opondo, who is the chairman of the Kenya Society of Physiotherapists. Good morning, Henry, and welcome to the program. Thank you, Jen, and good morning. All right, so let me start with you, Henry. Um, you are the chairman of the Kenya Society of Physiotherapists. Kindly give us a brief um, description and functions and maybe mandate of the Kenya Society of Physiotherapists. Again, for this opportunity, uh, first and foremost, Kenya Society of Physiotherapists is a registered entity under the registered societies as a welfare body for all the physiotherapy stakeholders in this country. So, mm -hmm. is to advocate for the best practice possible for our members and to extend to our patients uh, our practice to offer continuous medical education so that our members can keep abreast with the latest information in regards to clinical physiotherapy services among mm -hmm. others. All right, fantastic. Thank you for that. And also, let me come to you, Douglas, just for the benefit of our viewers to understand what the Physiotherapy Council of Kenya is all about. Kindly give us a condensed uh, description of the organization. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. Um, uh, Physiotherapy Council of Kenya is uh, one of the agencies in the Ministry of Health. It is one mm -hmm. of the regulatory bodies uh, in the Ministry of Health. It was established under an act of parliament, uh, the Therapies Act number 20 of 2014, to mm -hmm. regulate the training and practice of physiotherapists uh, in the country. So our mandate is uh, uh, to regulate uh, all the all the practice of therapy in the country. And uh, uh, in this, we we register therapists, we give them a practice license. We Register, we register health facilities that offer therapy services. We offer licenses uh, to clinics and facilities that offer therapy services. And mm -hmm. we accredit all the training institutions uh, that offer therapy training. Thank you. All right. Just now, sticking with you, Douglas, you know, where you're talking about physiotherapy, and maybe one could be watching us this morning and wondering what is physio uh, physiotherapy. So, from your uh, professional point of standing, when you talk about physiotherapy, what really does it mean and what does it entail? So, physiotherapy is, an, is one of the health care one of the health professions in the in the in the country. Yes, it is. Uh, it is uh, uh, it's, it's major aim is to restore functions which have been lost through injury, disability, mm -hmm. trauma, and, uh, and uh, uh, such, such problems. So we, are, we employ a number of, uh, a number of uh, ways, including uh, therapeutic exercises. We also mm -hmm. use uh, equipment to restore functions or to restore uh, uh, near normal as possible. All right. Come to you, Henry. You know, looking at our country and the aspect of physiotherapy, how would you gauge our country in terms of the uh, level of um, physiotherapy services that are offered, looking at specialists, and just the general overview of the state of physiotherapy in Kenya? Thank you, Jim. That, that's really a good question. Uh, overall, if you look at our country representation uh, mm -hmm. in 
consumption of physiotherapy services to our patients yeah. and that most of our physiotherapy and most of our physiotherapy facility are highly dense in the urban sector than mm -hmm. the rural sector. So in a nutshell, what I'm saying is that we are still not yet up to the level where we can say physiotherapy is consumed at the primary level. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to the gaps that are there when it comes to um, physiotherapy, its delivery in the Kenyan space. And maybe just starting with the aspect of facilities uh, that are available in the country. As you have rightfully put it, most of them are in urban setups. Why is this the situation? And maybe what needs to be done to just ensure that we have uh, more facilities set up across the country that will be able to offer these services to most of the Kenyans and make it a primary service. Let me start with you, Henry, before we get to Douglas. Yeah, uh, in terms of this gap that uh, is really uh, clearing, uh, I'll say we have enough physiotherapists that are trained. I can't say we are at a, a deficit on the training uh, to have physiotherapists. And so there are many unemployed physiotherapists compared to the population of the candidates who need physiotherapy services. I think the biggest reason is issues to do with human resource for health, that is the employment. We don't do uh, annual employment. For example, I want to give you a good example. Every, yes. every year you find like this and uh, increment of population growth of a, a nation like Kenya. Like many children have been born and so forth. So the, the society continues to enlarge. So we find that every year there's like teachers recruitment. Every year there's like police recruitment. Every year there's like military recruitment. But mm -hmm. not recruiting also the medical uh, category, the physiotherapist, to help manage this population that is growing. So largely it's about employment. And if you look at this nation very well, you find that the health sector is divided into public mm -hmm. and private. The biggest the biggest provider of healthcare services in this country is the public. So the government is not employing enough physiotherapists to meet the needs of its population. That is the biggest gap we have. And that's now we are finding more physiotherapists in urban sector where we tend to also have private health facilities and private health facilities as much as they are helping to cater for the health needs of this country they have to self-sustain. They are not funded by the government. So you find mm -hmm. that you can minimize their cost by not employing many physiotherapists or appropriate physiotherapists to meet the population needs. Okay. Douglas, your thoughts on this aspect of, you know, um, step, uh, specialists and it being one of the challenges or the gaps that have been identified when it comes to physiotherapy services in our country? Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, mm. If I may take you a little bit back, huh? yes. training of the therapists uh, started way back in 1966. At that time, we only had uh, one training institution that came to see Nairobi. And uh, in that class of 1966, we had only four students. Uh, over the years, the training of the profession has really grown. We now have about uh, 12 training programs. Uh, yes. A number of them, there are six who are training at uh, diploma level, and uh, six are training at uh, degree level, and uh, only one one institution, that is Jomo Kenyatta University, is training at master's. Uh, they have two programs at master's. That is master's uh, of orthopedic and manual therapy, and uh, master's in uh, neuro rehabilitation. So coming back to your question, you realize uh, we have a very big gap in specialization. Mm -hmm. Like uh, last year, when we when we faced uh, COVID-19 pandemic, and even uh, when what we are still experiencing now, it was realized that we have a serious need for cardio, cardio respiratory therapists. And unfortunately, we do not have a specialization in our country that trains on on cardio respiratory uh, therapy. So we still have a lot of uh, challenges in specialization in our country. 
we, mm-hmm. we we are working with a number of our institutions so, so possibly in the near future we expand the, the scope of specialization for our profession so that we can cover all the spheres of the of the profession and i'm happy to report that we are working closely with uh with Jomo Penyata university we are also working with ambapef university so that we mm-hmm. can and also KMTC nairobi so that we can expand yeah. the specialization on a program for our profession thank you now, we know we, uh, over the years we have seen that, you know, the medical space has what is one of the industries that has been thoroughly affected by quacks, uh, you know, just pausing as professionals. Looking at the physiotherapy space, do we have a problem when it comes to quacks uh, posing as professionals? And if so, to what extent has this uh, been a problem? Douglas. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, just to, to cover the last question, huh? We have about uh, 2,000 registered therapists uh, as we speak. And uh, the 2,000 therapies cover a population of 50 million Kenyans. So looking at it, it's like uh, one therapist is to 25,000 Kenyans. That is way Mm. below the WHO. The WHO requires standards of about one to 2,000, one therapist for 1,000 people. So we have a serious uh, shortage of therapists. So coming back to your coming back to your question, uh, the profession, as I say, the profession started way back in 1966, and over the years, we, the profession uh, has been able to grow in a number of spheres. And uh, uh, in the year 1990s, the year 2000, we started having a lot of problems. The public were not able to differentiate uh, who is who is a genuine therapist who is not yes. a therapist and we had a lot of problems and also the facilities you will find a facility indicated therapy therapy clinic but we are not sure the people who are running that facility are the therapists so yes we have had a serious issue of um, a serious issue of mal- of uh, people who are putting the therapists mm. and that is why mm-hmm. we, we, we we lobby the ministry to allow us to have a regulatory body and we are very yes. careful to the ministry that they allowed us and also parliament that they passed our act in uh, 2019 to regulate the practice uh, and training of the therapy and i can tell you for sure since mm-hmm. uh, 2018 since 2018 we started uh, registering uh, registering and licensing the therapists we have been able to significantly uh, sanitize the space we 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 we, we, uh, we require that uh, all kenyans all therapists now in kenya who have a practicing license yes. and uh, to be registered and to have a practicing license at all times we also require that every clinic that is offering the therapy services is uh, is uh, is registered and has a license and before we register there are a number of things we check we check mm-hmm. uh, we check issues of infrastructure we check issues of equipment and we also check that the people who are in those facilities are actually licensed they are registered and they are licensed and also they continuously update their skills through what we call continuous professional development thank you all right. That brings me to now, or the other end of, you know, having quags and uh, the levels of awareness among the population when it comes to knowing who is a genuine physiotherapist and who is not. Henry, when it comes to awareness among the population, are we doing well enough for, so that, the, you know, the bigger chunk of the population who might actually come to seek physiotherapy services are able to identify a genuine practitioner from, um, you know, someone who is just representing themselves as a professional and yet they are a quack quack thank you jen i will say there's been significant attempt to address this issue mm-hmm. uh, and uh, there's something called dr google everyone has the information about themselves what they need to do and so forth so you find that many patients can self-refer to a therapist, but the good question is they know this is a truly registered physiotherapist. Uh, I know that there are some of our people in this 
environment that puts us physiotherapist uh, in form of massage therapist that mm-hmm. is not recognized by our act or any act in the council or under the health sector. There are people who are posting like gym specialists and they come mm-hmm. and say physiotherapist. Those are not physiotherapists. A true physiotherapist has an ID card like license showing his qualification, his name, mm-hmm. picture. There are other attempts we are making to even digitize this information whereby you can easily verify through using your phone. We are trying to see how you can also just find a physiotherapist at your comfort, Google, right. and, and find the person that has been recommended by mm-hmm. or verified by the by the regulator and the society as competent in this docket to help meet your health needs. So it should be very clear and continue to advocate that a physiotherapist is someone who has undergone a formal training and mm-hmm. has undergone licensure by the Ken- by the Physiotherapy Council of Kenya. Not a massage therapist, not a gym mm-hmm. specialist. All right. I think that is the necessary information and especially so for the public when it comes to just looking at um, the aspects that you need to note in order to identify a genuine physiotherapist. In the least, they should be having an ID card with their picture and an ID number that can be able to trace back to just see their uh, registration details and credentials. Now. Let's come to the aspect of technology. You know, we are living in a fast-paced world and technology is spilling over in all industries. And looking at the physiotherapy space, I believe there are some types of therapy that require the application or assistance of technology in order to just keep up with the global standards. When it comes to ensuring that as a country we are keeping up with these global standards to offer world-class services, how are we doing? Douglas. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jen. Yes, uh, we cannot afford we cannot afford to live uh, behind in terms of technology. Yes. We 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 endeavor we endeavor to practice evidence based evidence based medicine, mm-hmm. and uh, on that note, we we are working very closely with the Minister of Health to identify uh, to identify a uh, uh, list of a uh, 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 priority assistive technology uh, products uh, which, which will enable us in our practice and uh, that is something we, we shall be endeavoring very soon so that we can be able to get the priority assistive uh, list for our country and i think that will transform really our practice as the practices all right so just and also just thoughts on the same when it comes to technology and embracing it and especially so for the smaller um outlets that could be offering physiotherapy services or any form of therapy for the, to help just in the recovery process your thoughts on the same uh jen i didn't get you very clear but i think you're asking about the use of technology in our profession Yes, the use of technology to just make sure that um, as a country, we are keeping up with the global standards of therapy that can be offered. Yes. So uh, this is uh, what we call continuous uh, medical education, whereby Mm -hmm. we have what we call um, the latest trends, the innovations in physiotherapy. And and, and I hope when you get into this, you find that there's a lot of Diversification and in terms of physiotherapy, there are different uh, uh, subspecialties within physiotherapy. And so we are looking at it. Uh, let me put in a, 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 a simple English, like from a general practitioner physiotherapist to a specialized physiotherapist, whereby you have an expertise to a certain key department in the human body. All right. Now, let's talk a bit about the costs that are involved when it comes to physiotherapy. Because for the most part of the conversation, um, at least for the interaction that I have, correct me if I'm wrong, most people are not able to afford some of the physiotherapy um, services that they may require to help in the recovery process. Looking at the aspect of costs, what do we need to understand as a people where physiotherapy is involved? Henry. Uh... This is a very true question. 
And mm -hmm. I think what I have witnessed is what we call, for example, someone suffers stroke, they are admitted in a hospital, undergone different uh, treatment from maybe a neurologist, cardiologist, and many other people. Mm -hmm. Physiotherapists will come in, nutritionists might come in, and many other. Now, the journey to recovery mm -hmm. is not a one day off or a one week off thing. Physiotherapy uses physical needs to promote and facilitate optimum uh, functional capability and individual. If you have stroke, for example, what we call weakness or paralysis of one side of the body, you are not going to take tablets that are prescribed and packed in a, a, a pocket, a, 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 yes, in a tablet, that you're going mm -hmm. to take, make sure your muscles come activity. You are going to go different forms of physiotherapy treatment, different forms of physiotherapy uh, management from day one up to the time we can now say you return back to the community. Now, that long duration is actually what adds to the of it. It's not like antibiotic whereby you expect that within five days you need to see significant change. You can even mm -hmm. have therapy for two weeks with very, very minimal change. But if you stop, the process of regressing, getting worse, is actually more higher than trying now to maintain what you gain. That is what brings the issues of the cost uh, to our, 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 our patient. Now, how can we address it? The best yes. way to address it, the best way to address it is, is to enlighten the, how do you call it, the payers. For example, in public sector, NHIF. NHIF should be able to understand that physiotherapy is not a one-off package medication or talent that you are discharged with it and that is it. We need to continue enlightening them and hence they will know. But we need to embrace what we call speciality in given different uh, uh, sector. Like now physiotherapy is a specialist in making sure <coughs> your functional recovery comes back to normal. If we engage in short like NHIF and understand that post discharge in the world, there's still life of this patient. A mm -hmm. child born with palsy, for example, we need to undergo physiotherapy nearly, nearly for the rest of their life, for them to become people who are capable in the society. This is an okay. information to tell the co pairs, be it a private insurance or public insurance. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this brings me to the conference that um, just started today, the East Africa Physiotherapy Scientific Conference that will be running from today through to the 13th. And the theme for this year is uh, transforming physiotherapy practice, recent trends in, physio tech in physiotherapy techniques and research. Um, Douglas, looking at this conference and the impact that it is set to have in our country's practice of physiotherapy, what are your thoughts? Thank you, thank you very much, Jen. I think um, uh, over the years, every every profession uh, evolves. And uh, physiotherapy has uh, really evolved. There are so many mm -hmm. evident uh, practices which have emerged. And this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to share ideas uh, with the East African community. And uh, mm -hmm. but we are happy that uh, in this conference, we are going to have uh, participants from Burundi, we are going to have participants from Rwanda, we are going to have participants from uh, Ethiopia, we are going to have participants from DRC and, and the region. We realize uh, their, their, their practices, practices in our countries are, are, different, are different. There are those countries which have advanced in, in, in their practices, there are those countries which are a bit behind in their practices, and we want, yes. we want to use this opportunity we want to use this opportunity to learn from each other. We want to, to get what is uh, what are the best practices in those countries so that we can uh, we can enhance and tap from the, the best practices in our region. And I think this this is a very good opportunity for mm -hmm. for, for our region and also for the for the for the council. We are looking at uh, issues of also integration. Mm -hmm. 
uh, one of the one of the key things uh, in the East African integration is to allow labor movement, labor movement within our regions. And this is something which we have not been able to achieve uh, in the other because we have not been able to understand the levels of practice in our in our different countries, so that we yes. can be able to to move around. Uh, our sister, the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Council, have been able to develop a common curriculum for the for the East African countries. They have a common East Af a common curriculum, common curriculum for Kenya, common curriculum for Uganda, common curriculum for Tanzania, and the rest of East Africa. We are looking forward out of this conference that will mm. come with a way forward on how we can uh, harmonize our practices, how we can look at our curriculum so that we can uh, move towards integrating the practice and movement of labor within our regions. Thank you. All right. As we bring this conversation to a close, just uh, throwing the same to you, Henry, looking at the theme for this year that is all about transforming physiotherapy in our physio uh, physiotherapy practice in the Kenyan space and more so looking at the techniques and more research. What opportunities lay ahead for our country just from this conference? Very briefly. Very briefly. Uh, thank you. If you look at our country, uh, as been a, a key stakeholder in the East Africa economic law, where there has been mutual benefits, uh, looking at the largely three spheres, political, economic, and social. Jen, mm -hmm. you just learned that health can be a global source of the insecurity. We've just seen COVID. Yeah to one country and it affects the entire globe. So we are looking at health as a security threat. And if we talk of politics, if we talk of activity, if we talk of social activity, they have direct influence on how health, mm. health a nation population can be. So we want to connect yes. and share our experience, learn and see which areas can we strengthen so that we can give the best opportunity and we can put adequate structure to share information and advance the journey or the agenda of physiotherapy at what we call primary health care and without, prime, without physiotherapy as primary health care. We are not going to achieve what we call universal health coverage. And that is not only a vision 2030 for Kenya, but that is established yes. and as SDG, Sustainable Development Goal. So it is an opportunity for all of us to reflect what are the gaps, mm. what are the loose ends, best can we package our profession to deliver to our population. All right, fantastic. Remember, this is a conference that has just kicked off today and will be running through to the 13th of uh, this month. That is made is happening in Mombasa. That is the East Africa Physiotherapy Scientific Conference. And the theme for this year is a transforming physiotherapy practice, recent trends in physiotherapy techniques and research. Again, just ensuring that as a country, we are offering worldwide standards when it comes to physiotherapy and uh, that brings us to a close of this conversation we have been speaking with douglas kutut who is the ceo of the physiotherapy council of kenya that is to the right of your screen and to the left we have henry opondo who is the chairman of the kenya society of physiotherapists thank you very much and for making time to be with us this morning thank you very much thank you Jeff. Is that in regards to today? But thank you for being with us. We will be back tomorrow morning with another edition of Good Morning Kenya. For now, we wish you a lovely day. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing. I am Jane Wamboy.